The first problem with making decisions about whether or not to fly in the volcanic ash cloud over Europe is the lack of scientific data about the effects on aircraft of this type of very fine atmospheric ash in this concentration. How much, if any, volcanic dust can an aeroplane fly through safely and without causing progressive degradation that will gradually make its engines inefficient and uneconomic? The second problem is that apart from the volcano's core plume, which can be seen by satellite, aviation authorities ho have no active means of tracking the movement of the dispersing ash, which covers a wide area. The position of the dispersing ash can only be calculated using mathematical models, which are turning out to be fairly accurate, but not sufficiently accurate to enable aircraft to be tactically directed to safe sky sectors. The third problem is that sensor systems like LiDAR that have the potential to see even fine volcanic dust have not been developed to the point where they're ready for fitment in commercial aircraft. And until they are, pilots will not be able to make decisions when they're airborne about how to avoid ash encounters. But I'm now going to take a look at what makes the problem that we have unique. Volcanoes somewhere on the planet erupt frequently but normally the ash they produce affects areas in which aviation activity is far less intense than it is over Europe. This is the first time in aviation history that ash has blanketed an entire continent, and fate has not been kind in selecting the location. Europe has the most concentrated aviation activity anywhere in the world. Until now, the tactic for dealing with ash clouds has been to fly around them. We never needed to understand them, just avoid them. UK Air Navigation Service provider NATS honestly admits that the biggest problem it has in making decisions about opening or closing airspace is the lack of data about the risk associated with this kind of ash cloud and the difficulty of tracking the precise position and extent of the airborne ash. NATS quotes its remit, which incidentally applies to all air traffic control providers, and they say, we are not to direct flights into a known flight hazard. If they were to do so, their position would be morally and legally parlous. The question is, is this a known flight hazard or just a suspected one? In this specific case, European airlines and airlines bound for European destinations from outside can't fly around the ash cloud because most of the time in the last five days, it's filled the sky above almost the entire continent. Unless it moves, they can't arrive or depart without flying through it. One of the consequences of applying the traditional technique of ash avoidance in the past is that the aviation industry has never had to research the risk of damage, particularly to aero engines, of flight through areas of widely dispersed upper airspace volcanic ash rather than the volcanic plume itself. The industry fully understands the effects of flying through ash plumes downwind of volcanoes. This concentrated abrasive ash erodes the cold section of turbine engines and clogs the hot section, dramatically reducing the available engine power or even causing them to flame out to stop. Engine core repair following this kind of damage is usually unfeasible, making replacement the only option. But volcanic plumes themselves are easy to avoid. They don't cover a wide area and satellites can track them accurately. Unfortunately, satellites can't detect the type of more dispersed, very fine ash particulates over Europe. The progress of this cloud is estimated by computer modelling and atmospheric sampling, but the particles remain abrasive to moving parts in engines. There are greater and lesser concentrations of particles at different heights, their distribution in the atmosphere determined by the strength of the individual eruption that projected the ash skyward and then by the drift of the weather system. Meanwhile, below these layers, the dust is constantly drifting down from the upper air to the ground, so none of the air beneath the layer of ash is absolutely ash-free. My car parked in the open air in southwest London is covered by a thin layer of ash. So what can the industry do? 
The current rather stable weather pattern unfortunately looks as if it'll continue to sustain a drift of ash from Iceland toward Europe for the next five days at least. Meanwhile, aircraft from KLM, Lufthansa, Air France, British Airways and others have carried out flight tests and their experience was universally benign. What of that? Maybe they just got lucky. The trouble is, we don't know. What's more, we don't yet know whether low-level abrasion has affected the efficiency of their engines. An increase in fuel consumption for the life of an engine would be a high price to pay for an early return to the skies. And if that abrasion were to continue each time the aircraft made a flight through some light ash, the efficiency reduction would have the potential to be compounded until it became significant. The airline test flights may have brought back good news, but other tests didn't. A fully instrumented Met Office Dornier 228 returned from its atmospheric sampling flight on Sunday, saying it had detected levels of ash that would probably represent a risk to flight safety. And on the 15th of April, a pair of Finnish Air Force Boeing F-18 Hornet fighters took off from their base north of Helsinki and suffered serious problems with their engines. When they returned, the inspected engines showed classic internal volcanic ash damage and they may never power an aeroplane again. Finally, it's not just the Icelandic volcano that's provided Europe with this problem. It's the combination of a volcano with an untypical weather system for the time of year over the British Isles and Northern Europe. High pressure and northerly winds have dominated for more than two weeks now and look as if they'll continue to do so. If typical April weather for the region were to return, the normal southwesterlies would bring frontal activity and rain showers, and they would drive the ash cloud northeast toward northern Siberia, leaving Europe in the clear. So that's the situation. Now, what can the industry do? This will happen again. The Icelandic volcano called Katla that's directly adjacent to the one that's giving us the trouble now is due to erupt in the next 20 years. It's essential that now, while the government research agencies can measure the characteristics of this present phenomenon, that they take the opportunity to do so. Then maybe when it happens again, industry will have developed the tools to measure the risk to aircraft precisely and the technical means to track the fine ash cloud so accurately that aircraft can navigate around and between the dangerous parts as they do today with storm clouds.